harvest is the most vital in our history. The most important thing in the life of the garrison at Malta is, of course, the arrival of supplies. After the hazardous voyage of the convoy that brought them, the most urgent task is their unloading and dispersal. In spite of the thousands of raids on Malta and all the damage done, and in the face of more attacks on the island fortress during the actual unloading of these new cargoes, the job went steadily on day and night, men of all the services and civilians cooperating in the work. Vital supplies like food and ammunition and oil. Dispersal points were fed by lorries, which took the stuff from the docks as fast as it came out of the holds. Some of Malta's historic forts, originally built to withstand cannonballs, haven't done so badly against bombs. Fort St Elmo, for instance. In the shadow of the battlements, men supplement their rations by means of allotments, the same as we've seen the army doing at home. As a matter of fact, at least one unit at Malta runs its own farm. They irrigate the land and they grow cabbages. And they're very careful indeed about the pig tub, saving every scrap from each mess, collecting it all for the regimental swill. The results are evidently well worth the trouble. As for the magnificent defence of Malta, medals for gallantry were recently presented by the governor, Lord Gort, to men of all three fighting services who have shown outstanding devotion to duty in some of the most violent attacks of the war. Maltese NCOs were among the recipients and there were also awards to members of the police and civil defence forces. <laughs> 